<laughs> okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're joined by Venerable Sarinda. Uh, he's a a, a, a a student of um a student and expert practitioner of of Buddhism, and uh, you you're joining us from Myanmar and staying, I think, in in Nong Ping. Uh, Ashima is ICHK school psychiatrist. And I'm here as the, the TOK teacher to try and make the introduction for Gleb. Gleb is a year 12 IB TOK student, and he's here to introduce. Um, I think your question is around what challenges are raised by the dissemination of knowledge. Uh, I'll type that into the chat bar so we've got that um, to work from. Um, so would, would people like to briefly introduce themselves? Well, I've, okay, so we start. Yeah, yeah. Are we are we are we ready to go then? I've I've briefly introduced you anyway. So, Venerable Surinder, um, could you could you first begin by telling us a little bit about what brings you to Hong Kong? Ah, okay. Yeah, just just a little bit introduction. Now, can you hear me well, actually? Yeah, very well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. You know, I'm from Myanmar, Myanmar, actually, and yes. I be Buddhist man for about twenty years actually. Yes, I also became a monastery member when I was about ten. So altogether, I I I I have been become monastery member for about thirty years. <laughs> okay, and then I finished my our traditional Buddhism related exam in my in my university in Myanmar. We call be a Buddhism and also am a Buddhism. And then after that, I came here, Hong Kong U, uh, to join Master of Buddhist Counseling. Yeah. Uh, yes, I think that, that's enough intro, yeah? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'm just put, putting into our chat box, uh, this is Gleb's question. So Gleb is uh, researching for his TOK exhibition where he chooses three different objects which represent three different areas of knowledge. And uh, currently, well, maybe Gleb can speak to that. It's quite loud, right? But um, the the IA prompt, which oh. links them all, is what what challenges are raised by the dissemination and or communication of knowledge. So I think that while our conversation can organically uh, evolve into other areas, I think that's a nice framing question to give our conversation a a focal point. Um, Gleb, would you like to ask Venerable Surinder uh, your first question? Now, Gleb's typing away because he's in a, a quite a loud hotel lobby. All right. So um, I think uh, yeah. if, if I also use this time, I'll come uh. over into our chat bar, the, the five questions that we've prepared and uh and then also we can uh, we can go beyond that I, I'll, I'll speak for gleb because i i'm aware that his first oh. two questions are uh his first two objects are youtube looking at this new platform for technology uh and and how it can really spread you can you can go and search anything within youtube so Certainly on the surface, it appears to be this marvellous tool for spreading knowledge, for communicating knowledge. But what Gleb's investigating is the, the bias within the algorithm, which means that while it's this uh, paradox of choice, you might believe that you've got access to the world, but actually it's the, the, the algorithm working on your predilections, your hobbies, your interests, what you've already viewed before. So it presents to you a kind of echo chamber of the world. And in, in, in Gleb's second object, Plato's allegory of the cave, that that idea is a philo philosophical idea discussed by Plato, that that in a sense, we are all living in a cave where we believe reality is is what is in front of us, viewed by or perceived by our senses. But, but in fact, uh, can just be a distortion. It can be the shadow puppets who, who appear on the wall as a mirage and that uh, when people one prisoner breaks away and sees the world as it is from the outside and returns to the cave to tell them how reality truly is, that that causes such uh, uh, discomfort and fear that they murder him for spreading the truth. So I think that we can talk about 
Mahayana Buddhism, and you 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 practice uh, a different branch. We can maybe talk about the differences between. Uh, yes, we call Theravada tradition actually. Theravada. Yeah, Theravada tradition. Yes, Theravada tradition actually. Yeah. Now, um, Gleb has already uh, asked his first question, so he asks. I, yes, yes, I saw. I would like to ask meditation. about the importance of meditating and why. That's the first question, right? So, oh, so, uh, the, so the, the first question is actually what challenges are raised by dissemination and communication of knowledge? Is that the first question? Right. Which one? Which one I would, I would explain us actually? Well, let's go with Gleb's first question about the importance of meditation. Okay. Please, thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay, thank you. I I don't know what to say. The importance of the importance of meditating. Ah. Okay. Yes. Maybe there are many answers about this question. But the important thing is we meditate it because we want to know. We want to know this. That is the main question. The main answer. The main answer. I mean, for example, in our daily life. We use lots of things in quickly, quickly, in a quick manner, so we can notice everything. So one of the main thing, the meditation is when you meditate, you notice everything because you are doing generally slowly, generally slowly. But but even though if you are doing quickly, you you can notice it. Yes, I mean to put it in the, in a nutshell, yes. The importance of meditating is to know the real nature, the real nature, to notice the real nature. That's the importance of medi uh, meditating. Yeah. If you have any question, just ask me again. I, I, I can answer it. Yes. Is it better for you and for me? When you yeah. when you talk about the real nature, are you talk about the awareness oh. of the, the biological, the ecosystems, or are you are you talking about more spiritual nature? Ah. Uh, yeah, normally okay. Uh, let, let's uh, let's let's dig deeper more. Normally, when we talk about in in our according to our tradition, there are two ways of meditating. We call concentrated meditation. The concentrated meditation focus on trying to focus is one thing. I mean, I mean, just controlling your mind not to think any other thing apart from the object. And the, another one is inside meditation. Inside meditation is just focus on one thing, but it's not focusing on everything, whatever is happening in your mind or in your in your sense. So there are two things we need, yeah. So normally when we practice meditation, I, I, I was a little bit confused about the importance of meditating. Yes, I must say, we meditate because without meditation, without concentration, without insight, we miss many things. We miss many things. So by meditating, we cannot miss everything. And that's the importance of meditating. Yeah. Just ask me a question if you are a little bit confused because uh, maybe sometimes I will miss some point of view. Okay. Um, okay. Ask another question on meditation. So I am aware of the Mahanaya version of Buddhism, but I am not so aware of Theravada um, branch of Buddhism. So if you could tell me the main difference. And I'm also aware that Buddhism is um, quite big on mantra chanting. Um, and they feel that it's also mantra chanting can also be a way of achieving nirvana. So they have the Mool Mantra, which is that ultimate mantra in the Mahanaya tradition, uh, that is the Om Mani Padme Hum. And they say, if you can not chant this a certain number of times on a daily basis, you do attain that and you can know uh, the illusion from the reality that John was talking about. So my question would be first, what is the difference between these two sects of Buddhism and where do they originate from? Secondly, 
uh, what is the importance of mantra chanting in Buddhism and is it also a form of meditation? It seems that uh, it's a very good question. I think he, his Zoom may have just dropped out for a second there. Um, Gleb, if you would like, you can type in all of your questions uh, as, as you think of them or, or could you copy them across. And I'll scan read through them and Ashima and I can try to intersperse your questions. Um, so after this, I'll I'll try to take Venerable Surinder's response to the question about whether rhythmic chanting uh, is medita meditative and then also start to think about the challenges that he's faced in knowing as a Buddhist practitioner. I was, um, I was tasked with it, with this Kadori farm, Gaia, a deep ecology and humans' relationship with nature. I had this task to do a four point six kilometer walk, and there's a deep time walk app which takes you four point six billion years into the past. Um, and because I was unable to do to do that because the app wasn't working. Um, hi, hi, hey, sorry, sorry. Come back. Sorry, from my side. Yeah. Um, I was, I was just, okay, just uh... uh, my, my, I did, a, I did a walk, um, for a course related to Kadori Farm. Um, the, the app for the science based deep history of the earth didn't work. So I put on some Buddhist chanting and I, I did find it strange at first, but then, but then it was very rhythmic and it did allow me to like calm down all of the outside noise. So, uh, yeah, Ashima's question was about whether chanting is a form of meditation. Uh, and also it's significant of reality. Now, this is uh, one of the things about Zoom. Um, we've got some good news, Gleb, in that your exhibition is not at the end of year, year 12. We're going to do ours at the beginning of year 13. Are you, um, are you in, how long are you in Hong Kong? Are you, you traveling as a family? I'm just wondering, whether you might be able to go and see Surinder in person uh three weeks yeah yeah okay I'm tra I'm traveling very soon as well so um it might be the case that we we can actually go and uh, meet him in person he is he is over there in Lantau it's a shame I had this this issue with Zoom when I was uh with the Zen and Sustainability Group and Wendy Burrell who lived in her and Luca, her family are from um, Norfolk Island, which is just off the Pitcairn Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And uh, we had a thunderstorm. They had a thunderstorm. But but we did make the connection. So I'm sure that this will still be a valuable experience. We'll find a way of getting the answers to the questions some way or the other. I think he's trying to get back in now. Hello. Hello. We cannot hear. So I think that you might need to turn your mic on if that's, um, if you can see, if that's the, the issue, oh, connecting to audio. Yeah, sometimes the signals are like that. And uh, Venerable Sur Surinder is is at the Nongping uh, area of, of Lantau. I, th I think the signals may not be. Okay, I I I can hear you actually. What oh, about you? Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, that's nice clear. That's sorry, nice and clear. Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, 
Sharma is asking that que uh, one question, right? I I haven't I haven't I haven't seen it now. Sorry. Uh, no problem. Uh, so she was asking whether chanting counts as meditation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's easier if I directly ask you. I think over the phone, it would be difficult to have a look at the chat. So my question was, uh, the first question is the difference between different sects of Buddhism, different types of Buddhism, the oh, yeah. main difference. And second was the importance of mantra chanting. And um, it, can mantra chanting lead to a certain kind of... Um, insight into reality okay and sorry uh, the past question i will i will talk about the past question later i will ask next question right okay <laughs> sorry <laughs> okay and then in the past question you asked about the main branches the main schools of Buddhism, right yeah okay uh the main branches there are two main branches. yes okay let me let me tell you a little bit more uh, generally we distinguish uh, mahayana tradition and then tirawara tradition you know, Mahayana tradition belong to uh, mainland, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea. So sometimes we call it Northern tradition. And then Buddhist tradition in Myanmar and then Sri Lanka, Thailand, it's belong to Tirawada tradition. Okay. Actually, this day, a little one more thing, one more tradition. Is it also belong to Mahayana tradition? But some time we distinguish Mahayana tradition two kind. The first one is the Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism is from Tibet. And then another Mahayana tradition is just like before. Uh, Buddhism from mainland and then from China, Japan or something. Even though they, they, they are actually they are of Mahayana tradition. Because sometimes we distinguish this those two things uh, because in Tibetan tradition their doctrines their teachings are a little bit sometimes esoteric, and then they more focus on spiritual practice. And then in Mahayana, the Mahayana tradition from mainland, and then Japan, Korea is focused on more focus on compassion, a little bit philanthropic was sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And in Tirawada tradition, generally we trying to preserve the teaching as as it is we don't want to change it yeah okay in mahayana tradition sometimes there are a lot of integration with their culture as much as i know okay as much as i know there are lots of culture for example in mainland china and then the their teaching their body teaching they have integrated with their own culture for example sometimes they integrated with uh, Confucianism, Taoism or something like that but in Theravada tradition we preserve the Buddha teaching as it is we don't want to we don't want to integrate it with the other tradition yeah okay uh that's it yeah that, that are the main branches uh should I should I talk about more about their uh, difference and similarity? Uh, yeah, I, I have a the source of these uh, um, sects of Buddhism saying is it the same source? Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, they are all the same sort because all of them we I must say all of them the main teacher is uh we call. That now contemporary organization we call the Buddha, right? The Buddha is it the main teacher? Their teacher is the the, the teacher is the same, and then they have a little bit different. There are there are some difference and also many similarity. Okay, okay. Uh, let me uh, let me tell you first similar things. The first thing they all recognize the Buddha as the main teacher, the only teacher, the real one. Okay, and then also all of the tradition, Buddhist tradition, they respect the Buddha and also the teaching and also the monastery member because of the monastery member preserve those teaching. Yeah, so they all respect all three. Sometimes we call triple gems, triple gems. Sometimes we call triple gems. And then also, uh, if you are talking about the Buddhism, whatever in Mahayana or Tirawara tradition. The main teaching is the Four Noble Truth. Maybe you already know this, right? Uh, do, do you know it, the Four Noble Truth? 
Have you ever heard of it? No. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. Thank you. Is it the main teaching? The main teaching. I mean. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit the story or the the future Buddha, the body setra, the future Buddha, the, the body setra. I mean, the body setra before the Buddha, right? Okay. And uh, so at that time he was a princess. He was prince. He was prince. So he look at the world. Okay. In, in this world, there are lots of suffering. He thinks so. So this is the past truth, the past noble truth. We call it the noble truth. Actually, the truth, yeah, noble truth. So in this world, there are lots of suffering. And then another one is okay. For those are lots of suffering, there is always a reason. Reason. There is always the re the reason. So that's it. The second truth. I mean, all suffering have their own causes and conditions. This is the, the second truth. Uh, that that one is okay. That is one truth. That cessation or that suffering, those suffering, cessation, liberation or those suffering. That is the one stages. Yeah. This is also the third truth. This is it the third truth. And then okay, the final truth is that is the way leading to the cessation or the suffering. So we call those the four things. Is the four noble truth because it is the main teaching actually. Or Tirawara tradition, Mahayana tradition, or accepted those teaching. It's the main one, actually. Okay, so suffering, that is the cause of suffering, that is the cessation of suffering, and that is the way leading to the cessation of suffering. Okay. Okay, they also accept the same, the same. Uh, okay. Okay. And they they all accept three characteristics. The reason is impermanence. Generally, everything is impermanent. They accept it. Everything is impermanent. Transient. Yes. Not eternal. Okay. And the second characteristic is so because they are all uh, impermanent, so they are all suffering. They are all suffering. Okay, that is another another characteristic is, is we call non self. Non self. Normally people believe that it's self, but according to Buddhism, we don't believe, we don't, we don't accept the self. So that's why the characteristic, the third characteristic is non self. We believe that three characteristics: impermanence, and then suffering, and then non self. Okay. The main thing is, yes, we all accept everything happened because of causes and conditions. Everything happened, I mean, everything has their own reason, their own reason, yeah. Okay, maybe there are many similar things, all Buddhist school, all, the, all Buddhist brand, they accept it, but okay. I, I will talk about different things, Mahayana, between Mahayana tradition and then Tirawara tradition. Okay, so according to according to Tirawara tradition, generally we trying to we trying to liberate those. Is it the main the main antimatter goal? Is it the antimatter goal? Trying trying to liberate those suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay, we must say generally personal liberation is it important, right? And we accept it that way. And um, but according to Mahayana tradition, they focus on they generally focus on to become the Buddha because they want to liberate other people. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. So based on those and even though in Mahayana tradition they focus on uh, the Buddha, they focus on the Buddha and then they also they also want to liberate other people from the from these suffering. But generally you can say they are the anti goal is to enlighten or get us to the suffering. Yeah. Okay. While Gleb is still here, I I would like, can I ask uh, okay. 
another question of Gleb's. Um, okay. So he's he's asked about the importance of meditation, and uh, then he he says, if you are interested in Buddhism, which sutras would you recommend to first start reading? And uh, Diamond Sutra, okay, thank you. Heart Sutra. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry, because I uh, I came from Tirawada tradition, so I must I must recommend our our traditional discourses, the, the, the traditional tota actually. But if you want to know about that Mahayana tradition, yes, Diamond Sutra, uh, maybe is, is, is the most important one. But according to my tradition, I will recommend two soda. The first one is called Damasaka Bodhana Soda. Okay, okay. Later, I will, uh, I will send the link, okay, in the okay. check uh, to John Reese. Okay, later I will send, because, yeah, and, and then it, Another one is called another Lakana Soda. Okay, it's a different, it's a difficult one to, to, to talk about this one because generally all the Bodhi tradition, they all regarded these two discourses, two, these two teachings are the really important one. Yeah. Okay. I would I would send you the link later, right? Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, um now is Gleb, that okay? Yeah. Very good. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Gleb asks also, um, now, and, I, and I wonder whether this is from Mahayanan or Theravada, but he says, I don't fully understand the concept of the middle way. Could you please explain? Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, he doesn't understand the middle way? Really? No, is is no. that the question? Uh, no, he, does, he doesn't fully understand the concept of the middle way. The middle way. Could you please explain that? Okay, 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 okay. Do you have time? I have time. <laughs> because I have to explain a lot. That's why I'm asking. It's okay. I, I have time. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to keep on talking. I know that uh, Gleb is at a family event. So uh, Gleb, Gleb will indicate to me when he okay, needs okay. to jump off, but we can continue the conversation. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so I talk about the phone no better, right? Okay. The founder, because then the middle way came from that that idea. Okay, so there are the four noble truth. There is suffering. There is the cause of suffering, and, and the liberation of suffering, and the way lead into the cessation of suffering. The middle part, the middle way. Okay, and then okay. Generally, when we are okay, let's talk about. The life of the body said uh, before he renounced the war he, he renounced from his palace he 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 lived uh in luxurious life his life he was prince he was prince so his life is very comfortable so and that by by enjoying those sensual pleasure he can find any the real liberation the real happiness so later he renounced that prince life and then became kind of monastery member. And then at that time he practiced for about six, six years. He practiced the most uh, challenging practice. The most challenging practice is very, very severe, very, very difficult to follow. But even though he followed that practice for about six years, he don't know the real truth. He don't know. I mean, he don't become a Buddha. He didn't become a Buddha. So later, okay, I'm talking about two extremes. Normally, we talk about two extremes. The past extreme is sensual pleasure. The another extreme is very severe, very challenging spiritual practice. Those two way he follow, but that both way cannot cannot go to the anti-merit, and uh, that 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 liberation of the suffering actually so that part okay that middle part consists of actually if I say that middle part means eight factors eight factors maybe you already know this okay but because I, I need to I need to explain in this part you you may know it's right understanding, 
โอเค right thought right speech right right livelihood right action okay let me let me take that okay right understanding right thought right livelihood Uh, okay, let me three right effort and then right concentration and then right mindfulness. Those a p a actually in Buddhism, if you if you say the m e d a p a actually the b a t c o n s i d e r those eight p a t t e r That's excellent. That, Thank you very much. That that one is called is the m e d a way. Yeah. So actually, uh, if you want to know more about those things, we need to explain more those one one to one. Actually, <laughs> yeah. all right. Well, knowing knowing Gleb as I do, as an IB student, he uh, he does seem to have have many personal qualities: uh, right view, right resolve, right conduct. Uh, so, uh, one of his responsibilities now is to his family. So, Gleb, do you want to say cheerio to Venerable s u r i n d e r and get back to your um, family gathering? Oh, thank you so much for the meeting. Thank you. Okay, cheerio, Gleb. All the best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Be in touch on Monday. We'll carry on our conversation now. Thank you. Okay. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> um. Well, thank you very much for that answer. Now, uh, I, okay. I, uh, I wonder if we could just, Gleb has some follow up questions, and but uh, we we began by saying. We're interested in pursuing this idea of the challenges uh, faced in the dissemination of knowledge. I just wondered, from a personal viewpoint, you you said that you began uh, as a novitiate at 10 years old. Um, can you talk about some of the major challenges that you faced um, uh, upon your journey, upon your pathway? What are the, the major challenges that you faced? Oh, sorry, we all. Oh, I maybe maybe. I don't want to misunderstand your question. Well, this uh, are you major challenging about what? Sorry. <laughs> well, okay. So from from uh, from my perspective, as someone who is secular, I suppose, but interest certainly interested in ideas around spiritual spirituality or holistic ideas about the relationship with with the world. But It would seem that your your dedication to your practice from 10 years old uh, across 30 years of study and practice that must it's it's quite the dedication. So I'm just wondering what kind of challenges you faced upon the way. Were there any moments like in the Christian tradition, Jesus walks into the wilderness and is tempted by the devil? I wondered if you had any moments where you're, you you wor you worried or you you veered away from the pathway. There must be there are many temptations within our society to not follow the eight, the eightfold pathway. What? Uh... Uh, okay, sorry. Actually, yeah, maybe maybe the tradition of the t i r a w a r a tradition, t i r a w a r a country. So in t i r a w a r a country, there are many. Monastic member like me, they became a novice, and when they were young, and then later they became a monk just like me. Uh, so there are many Buddhist men. Not only me, there are many, many, many more Buddhist monks. So for some people, they think it's quite difficult to follow this path. But for me, it's not that quite challenging at the time. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe I'm not sure. I can follow that the the n o v e a p o p a maybe strictly. <laughs> yes, I'm not sure. Yes, I mean there are many Buddhist monks in Myanmar, in in Sri Lanka, in Thailand. They follow the Buddha's way, this way. The monastic mem they became monastic member when they were young. So at that time, we don't have that much challenging because uh, what can I say? We 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 became getting used to used to it a day by day actually. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but uh, yes, there is one. There is some challenges, you know. Uh, uh, later 
But before that, we don't have a phone, we don't have a, a lots of uh, entertainment. So later, we know lots of things. And then, yes, there are some monastery members, they became a lima again, and they don't want to become a monk anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are some people, yeah. But normally, it's just, just for a moment later, they know how to handle those situations. I see. I have a... Okay. And John, do you want to go first? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it compulsory for some families to send their kids uh, into the training? Because I know huh? from Tibetan Buddhism that it is compulsory. Some of the Rinpoches or some of the monks will have this vision that this particular person needs to be in this position and they will go and find them and bring them to the monastery. And it's quite harsh. Uh, and some of the families, they have to send each kid or at least one son to the monastery like an offering given to the Buddhism. But I'm not sure if that's the same or um, if I am correct here okay. uh, about uh, you know, uh, okay, job. okay, thank you. Actually, I don't know about Tibetan tradition and then the Chinese Mahayana tradition. Actually, in our tradition, there is no compulsory rule. There is no compulsory rule. Actually, you know, if you are talking about Tirawada tradition, generally, apart from monastery member, we don't have any compulsory rule. They teach it. If you if you can follow, just follow it. If you can follow, you don't need to follow it. That is no strict campus we do. So, but in our tradition in Myanmar, I don't know about uh, Thailand tradition and uh, Sri Lankan tradition, but in Myanmar tradition, if your parents, if parents are Buddhist, they always have a wish, a good wish. Okay, one day I will send my son's daughter to become a monastery member, even if for about seven days. But it's not campus three. It's, it's not compulsory. Yeah, it's not compulsory. But there are, that is, I must say, that is such kinds of culture, but it's not compulsory. Yeah. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Can I ask uh, one, of, one of Gleb's questions is related to Sunyata. Uh, now, I, I okay. think through doing a lit, just a little bit of reading that that's more of a Mahayanan concept, but maybe it, it relates to, is it the sense of non-self or the, the sense of, the emptiness or the the lack of self. Um, okay. Gleb's, Gleb's question is, uh, I'll, I'll just read it verbatim. What are some specific real life examples in which the concept of sunyata can be seen? So, oh. yeah. Can you speak to that, please? Oh, you know, uh, how do, do you mean the real some example? Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question. Okay, uh, I'm not sure he knows well about the Sonyata according to Mahayana tradition or not. Uh, but if you know his way, it's a little bit easier. Okay. He has done what a little bit of research. You? Do you know about that? Yeah, he's... So, sorry, I, it, He's read quite a bit about it, I think. That so, um, if you could speak to Gleb rather than rather than to me. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm not sure. I I know the answer, but I can explain about Sonyata according to Mahayana tradition. As long as I have studied. I yes, I have just I I've studied some of the Mahayana ideas, so maybe I can explain it a, a little bit. But I'm not sure. Is it difficult to say some are uh, the, for example, contemporary contemporary example? I'm not sure. I don't know. Could I try, <sighs> could I try to frame it in a, you know, in a way that um? So I with this Kadori Gaia ecology course, um, there were lots of references made to the. Uh, post enlightenment scientific industrial revolution which which has created this global capitalist world which which is the dominant cultural and economic paradigm and one of the the very famous philosophers rene descartes uh he came up with that statement i 
I think, therefore I am. I am. So the yeah. sense of self and the sense of ego uh, in the Western centric conception of the world is paramount, really a sense of selfhood uh, and asserting your rights is, is there within the US constitution. It is like we are separate entities and something of the course that was taught to us is that actually, well, it maybe shouldn't be this. And it's maybe reinforced in Christian tradition where you have that God creates the heavens and the earth and then creates man and then gives man dominion over all of the animals. So there's this this paradigm, this pa power. Mm -hmm. triangle. Man, the sense of self is at the top of it. Now, Buddhism is not that right. There's a. A, there's a getting away from a self there's an acceptance that we are one so is is that that a, a way of comparison that can be helped with explaining yeah yes 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 according to randy Dega, we we know that yes i think therefore i am okay but according to Buddhism, just a thought without a thinker actually okay so so at the past, I told you about three characteristics, right? Okay, impermanence and then suffering and then non self Okay, they are generally related. If you understand uh, the nature of impermanence, it's easier to explain the, the nature of non self Okay, according to the Buddhist teaching, everything generally, okay, generally everything is impermanent. They are not the same. So, so for example, uh, yesterday, even though we think it's me, Actually, it's not me anymore. For example, if you know some uh, photo, a picture of you a long time ago when you were young, you saw a, a picture, you might say, okay, this is me. But you might say, if you compare both of you, maybe that is similar things, but you are not the same. You are different one. Okay. Uh, okay, what can I say? For example, when you say here, there are some some pillar, some there are some pillar. So if you see the pillar, you must think, is it permanent? But if you come back later, after 100 years, 1000 years, you will know it would later it decay, it destroy anymore. So mm -hmm. I mean, everything is impermanent, not the same, even though we think they are the same, they are mm -hmm. not the same. Okay. Yeah, you, I don't know about many physics or something, but they had they also use it a uh, neutron and proton pro pro or something. They are actually, if you dig a little get dig a little more dig deeper about the those uh what can I say uh atom, you know the proton and neutron. They are just happening again and again. It's not con. It's not permanent things. Okay, I, I'm talking about the physical thing. Also, we have to, we can talk about the, our mental, our thought. Yes. So, according to Buddhism, our thought also impermanent. For example, if you are seeing something, you are just seeing. But sometimes, if you are listening, just you are listening. We can do the same, even though we think we are doing the same. Actually, it's very quick that we can understand it. For example, now you are sitting down. Okay. Can you think of a test chart? So if you ask the question, you can notice your test chart of the floor. Actually, even though you are touching all the time, you can notice it. I mean, our thought, our mind, also the same is impermanent. It happened and then later it's perished. It's happened and perished. So according to Buddhism, uh, but, it's just the thought. We don't have any thinker. Huh? Yeah. Uh, because because we we accepted the nature uh, that characteristic, the first characteristic of impermanence. Okay. So so let's talk about okay. Uh, just believe it, do you believe it or not? It's okay. <laughs> yeah. So be, because based on those ideas, we have to talk about the non self, you know? So everything is impermanent. So what is one thing is always the same in our mind or in our body or somewhere. 
we can find this. So we can see one thing is in, uh, one thing that is totally permanent. complicated eh? <laughs> it it's it's certainly a very different way of thinking yeah okay. uh, but I, th I think that's a that's a very nice example about yeah. the, the impermanence of thought that thought, thoughts can come into our consciousness and, and then disappear and um i think there's there's something in our our language that like the, the, the way that we described abstract nouns and and concrete yeah. concrete nouns so like this, yeah. this mug that table, the computer, the pillar you talked about, a concrete that yeah. we, we, our yes. language and our worldview often means that we see things as permanent and are, us as separated from uh, the subject and the object. That we are separated. And yeah. The, the, uh, the course I, I just took was looking, well, if we can just recognize that we are one organism amongst many organisms living within a biosphere. <laughs> Uh, where we're, we're mm. interrelated, that that would that would be a, a much healthier, harmonious uh, yeah. situation for our our planet's biodiversity, and would help yeah. help with climate change, for example. Um, well, thank you. Uh, I I have. I'm just. I wonder. Do you have time to speak for a little bit longer? Um, yeah, I've, it's okay. It's okay. If you have time, I have time. It's okay. I want oh, to explain you. more. Otherwise, you will mislead. You will misunderstand. I don't want to. I, I don't want. I. I don't want it that way. I, okay. I have time. It's okay. Thank you very much, um, Sarin. Now I can yeah. see your, your beautiful backdrop there, and also that these these are questions which they they uh, you, they need more time to think about, right? And uh, yeah. we're so busy in our worlds. It must be very nice to come to. Uh, the the retreat. Are you are you at your home or are your your your? Uh, no, I, I'm in the now I'm in the Landau Island at the Pau Monastery. Yeah, the Pau Pau Monastery. How? Yes, yeah, the Pau Monastery. Ah, yeah. oh yes. And how long <laughs> how long will you stay there for? Ah, uh, now I I think I've got about six weeks. <laughs> no, six yeah. weeks. Oh really? Six oh weeks. wow. Yeah. Uh, really, and, yeah. And that you're studying for your master's in Buddhist counseling at HKU, is that correct? Yes, yes, yes. That's a correct, yeah. And then you will go back to um oh uh I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> but you go back to I I've forgotten the, the are you from which city are you from or um, are you from the country? Myanmar, actually, Myanmar. I'm from Myanmar. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But which which city within Myanmar? Yangon? Oh, from Mandalay. From, from Mandalay. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Do you know it? Uh, I have not been uh, to, to Mandalay, but uh, I did visit uh. Uh, with my father. We went to uh, Lake, Lake Inlay and um, to, uh, uh, oh. to, to, Yang, to Yangon, the capital city. And uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, so were, can I ask you, um, you talked about when you were young, it wasn't such a challenge to to become yeah. a, a novitiate monk because that was the that was the norm within the culture um and yeah you 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 talked about your friends who with the phones like they they and to make a link to gleb's youtube uh idea that like well the whole other world and many other like tempting distractions like um whether it's to do with consuming buying products or having luxurious mm. lifestyles and all of the other temptations which are there um have you ever found yourself facing moments of crisis within your faith-based system moments where you feel pulled away from it and how have you how have you overcome those challenges if you've experienced them or has your has your faith always been resolute oh uh, actually i i don't know what to say i mean Yes, just like I told you before. Okay. 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 I never I never have I never have beautiful car. I never have beautiful building. So to be honest, I don't have such wishes. Okay. I wish I have that car or I wish I had that those building. So maybe it's a different to from personal to personal experience. I I'm not sure. I don't have such things. 
uh, I maybe I wanted, but my my craving is not that strong. <laughs> so it's not it's not problem for me actually. Yeah, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's difficult. Okay, okay, let me tell you something. A long time ago, in my village, in my village in Myanmar, we don't have electricity. Okay, at that time, we don't want the electricity anymore. It's okay. We don't have, even though we don't have electricity, we can survive it. Is it okay? But later, we have electricity. So after we got electricity, you know, our life became a little bit easier, comfortable, and uh, so sometimes, uh, sometimes we don't have electricity anymore because of the weather or many reasons. At that time, we have difficulty to without electricity at that time. You know, maybe yes. you can get uh, just the same things. We I haven't I haven't used those luxury things. So I mean, maybe I don't know the taste of those things. That's why I don't. I don't want that much, so it's not a problem. <laughs> right, yeah. right, very good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. it seems that oh, I, I don't know, but I think there is the case. There's uh, the, the price of property in Hong Kong is maybe amongst the highest in the world. People can spend their lives chasing, pursuing, like pay, paying off mortgages across twenty and thirty years. Then. That there's a, an English idea that your house is your home, or yeah, yeah, sorry, your house is your castle, you know, uh, every, yeah. whatever. Uh, the, so it is very strong within our culture this idea of acquisition and, and ownership, but um, the, but because of maybe your Buddhist sense of impermanence that you don't really own anything, and so you don't you don't need to, and it's a, I think that could be a very positive shift of mindset, uh, uh, an awareness <laughs> of. A, diff a different um, set of cognitive technologies to view the world in a different way, which would alleviate all, a, a lot of the financial stresses that people are under because there are yeah. alternate pathways. The luxury things that we need something, for example, uh, for example, we need computer, we need phone because to communicate with other, we need computer because to have access to to read books and then to access easily the, the internet or something like that. So we also have such kinds of things. But some of them, yes, yeah, so we can manage it, it's okay. Some of them, we don't have any, maybe we have desire, but our desire is a little different from from the lay people yeah so those desire i think yeah well that that's it's taking us on i think um when i review the questions that we sent i think we've we've covered um the, the challenges and uh we've looked at the differences between Theravada and and mahayana and buddhism uh and we we've we've, we've talked somewhat about the the, dig the digital modern age that we find ourselves in and the, di the distractions and then you've talked there about the um yeah the, the lack of desire for the for these objects which we, okay so um i wondered then if we might focus to to conclude our conversation um what are the major problems that you face when disseminating your spiritual <laughs> So that like, you have these insights, these, this wisdom, these these truths, and you, I wondered that you might look around the world and see uh, in in the center of Hong Kong or in the center of Yangon, in the busy cities in Mandalay, yeah. the busy the busy, busy commercial centers. Do you do you look at things not not with a kind of pride or a, or an arrogance to say I have the truths, but with, you, I wonder you might wish people like if they could only be aware that there is a different way um so what challenges or what do you face in disseminating in in communicating your uh, spiritual beliefs okay okay uh i should talk about the the most important part is okay according to our tradition the main part is as i said before uh pass, to try yourself as to liberate from the suffering that's the main, the main, the anti uh, Personal liberation is the main, the anti I mean, okay. 
after you try that, after you try that, you can disseminate your knowledge to other people. But here, when you are talking about dissemination, we may think about two things. The first thing is, okay, uh, we are just sharing our knowledge to every people because I because we want to we want we want all of the people know the teaching. That's one thing. Another thing is the people, other people, they just want to know it. They just want to know about this thing, about this practice. So I think it's a little bit different. Normally, according to our tradition, we don't try to recruit people. Mm. Uh, yeah, recruit people. I mean, if you want to know, yes, you can ask them or you can join meditation retreat or you can join Dhammato or something like that. It's okay. Uh, so at that time, we have some, maybe a problem. It's not a problem, I mean. Because when I joined the HKU, normally I had to lunch at a, uh, a vegetarian restaurant every day. Normally, most of the time, I met one people, one one stranger, two stranger. Uh, we have we sit down in the same table. Sometimes we share our knowledge. So when we are talking about the religion, sometimes it's quite easy. Sometimes it's not easy. Not easy. The main thing is their openness, open mindedness. Actually. Okay. If I if I also open minded and also if they are also open minded, it's easier to discuss everything. Yeah. If one of us, one of the one side is a little bit not open minded, if they are close minded, it's difficult to talk about those situations. Because sometimes I, I I met some people, they want to know about Buddhism. Some some of them are Christian Christianity, some of them are other uh, traditional traditional Hong Kong, traditional religion, and some of them are just atheist. But if they want to know about, about, about Buddhism, if they are really open-minded, it's easier to discuss everything. I can disseminate it, our knowledge, my knowledge is easier. Uh, even but so sometimes I, I later after after many not many okay four or five situation I concluded that if both of have have open minded it's easier to discuss it's easier to disseminate our knowledge our spiritual knowledge or Buddhist knowledge whatever whatever you call it is okay and then if even though some of them are educated but they are close minded so if we if if I met those people it's a little bit difficult to talk about this thing because whenever I said something, they are just looking at it from their viewpoint. So it's a difficult to difficult to make them understand it. Yeah. Yeah. So so I must say educated ones and plus especially open minded one, yeah, they are a little bit easier to talk about everything. From right. Yeah. We should come with yeah. an open mind. That's that's good advice. <laughs> Okay, yes, yes. I, I do have um one final question. Yeah. And I just wondered if you could think about the audience of this would be uh Gleb's classmates uh, in yeah. year 12 or year 13 students um in Hong Kong. They might be studying the IB or they're busy, they're busy with their studies mm -hmm. and they live in a very fast-paced digital world. There are lots and lots of distractions, they're they're under quite a bit of pressure. Um, I think I think we can all identify with that with that actually living in this busy busy world. Can you would, would it be possible for you to deliver some kind of message, some kind of advice about ways in which our students can can take their first step way step, steps towards a happier, more balanced, harmonious life. Oh, you know, uh, oh, you mean any Buddhist practice to make them happier? Is anything, that right? Anything from Some... your, your personal experience or your Buddhist uh, teachings and insights? Uh, just some some advice to give a lift and uh, maybe maybe as they are beginning their summer holidays, what might they do? What habits, practices? 
might they adopt to <laughs> leave leave more lead more harmonious lives like not you know steps in the right direction oh <laughs> sometimes you know sometimes is it you know knowledge is easy actually knowledge is easy you can get the knowledge from everywhere but the most important in the, in the sometimes it's not knowledge is it actually is the practice you know you know I I focus on this one because you know if they are really want to want to live happily or something, their cognitive skills also mature somehow. So if they want to follow, it's easier. Okay, let me tell you something. Okay, they also know is okay. Killing other people is good or bad. We can we can distinguish that question the first. We can discuss uh, we can we can discuss it, that question first. Killing other people is good or bad. Okay. Sometimes normally if we ask if we talk about this question, some people maybe say it's a good. Some people maybe maybe there are many other situations. But generally we all regard it killing other people is not good, right? So, I mean we have those knowledge. And also, we also those knowledge. Okay, how can I make someone happy? Okay, how can I uh, when uh, when am I happy? Sometimes we, we can we can think about our set too. Okay, happy. And some people uh, share something with us. We are happy. We know this knowledge. We have this knowledge, right? We mm -hmm. have this knowledge. I I mean. We know which is good, which is bad. Actually, we already know it, even though uh, we think that we we don't know it. So, what what can I say is yes, we can use that knowledge. We can do it more and more. Okay, the past then I said killing other people is not good. I know. Okay, what about hurting other people? Not killing, hurting hurting other people. It's not also good. Okay, or we can reverse that thinking again. If we have other people, for example, if something is in, in, in uh, something something has a lot of disease, something they have is a good, we can say it. I mean, we all we already have those knowledge actually, but we don't want to try it. We are just finding another thing. So we are just finding another thing, just like we are just searching for magic P, magic P. Yeah. Yes, actually, you also know it. Yes, okay. Which one is good? Which one is good? We also know it because our cognitive ski is really mature, right? But mm -hmm. we don't want to try it. We are just finding another way, generally. Okay, what I mean is, the past one is, just we know it, what is good, what is bad. But we can practice those things more and more, actually. Okay, this one is good. Just practice more. If you just only once a day, just do it to twice tomorrow and then next day thrice next day more and more and if this one is not good just redo it as much as you can actually hmm. okay. so a series of okay. thought like thought experiments maybe maybe no, they, can, no. they can see a story in the newspaper or on on online and they, or they can think about a situation with their family and friends and they could try to just to think about what is the right answer Yeah, yes, actually, I, what I mean is that sometimes we are searching, we are searching some kinds of knowledge, but we don't want to do practice. We are just searching another one. Okay, let me let me tell you something about the Buddha Hall. Do you have time? Yes. Joe, it's okay? Yeah, yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, okay. Okay, let me talk about the, the life or the body setup. Okay, at that time, the body, do you know the body terror, right? Body setup. Body uh, I know, know, I know some, some basic time, stories. Good, I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know about uh, he lived this uh, okay. luxurious life okay. and then he went to search for the truth with, with walking amongst the poor people. Okay. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, L let's think about this way. At that time, he was a monastery member, a, a little bit similar like me. Like, like Buddhist, Buddhist monk. At that time, after he saw the re, the Buddha, the previous Buddha, the previous Buddha a long time ago, he wanted to become a Buddha. So at that time, 
and plant out that Buddha, he determined, I also will become a Buddha. I will also try to become a Buddha like you. Okay, he determined it in the public. So after that, he think, after that, he think, okay, in this war, there are many things, there, there are things which can make me become a Buddha. He think himself, he didn't ask anybody. Yes, let me focus on this one. He thinks himself, because he's a mature one, he thinks himself, he didn't ask anybody. At that time, he found out 10 things, 10 things, okay, 10, 10 practice, 10, what can I say? We call 10 perfection, 10 perfection. We call 10 perfection. He distinct, he, he recovered 10 perfection. Okay, if I practice this and this thing, I will become a Buddha. After he he considered those things, he practiced those, he practiced those times. Later, many years he became a Buddha. Okay, what I'm saying is if you if we are mature one, if we can distinguish generally what is good or what is bad, we we have I must say we have enough knowledge to do good more and more things to reduce evil things actually okay okay i will i will i will send you that damn perfection later okay <laughs> sorry um, so okay if you are talking about how to practice this one it's a very difficult way to say it because i know lots i i must say sorry i, I know many teaching some of them i can practice some of them i don't practice Ah, uh, you know, these days many people talk about uh, the mindfulness, mindfulness practice. They always talk about this one, but you know, if you understand and if you practice the middle way, the middle bar, this is the main one. According to Buddhism, this is the main thing. If you can follow those teaching, yeah, they will be happier and happier. I mean, yeah. But it's it's a difficult to say every organize it information actually this time. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I think that we've we've oh, okay. had a long conversation and uh, there's there's a few um, okay. Uh, we, we, I, we, sorry, you... sorry, sorry to sorry yeah. to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. We have one one question I need to answer. Yes. Uh, Shama or she asked one question about chanting or something. Oh, Ashima. Yeah, yeah. Ashima was asking whether whether yeah. chanting is a meditative practice. Oh, 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 what what is the question? Can you can you tell me? I can see it, the question again. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, Jim. Do you do you remember that question? Uh, no, no, no problem. No, Ashima's question was about whether uh, chanting is itself yes. meditation chanting is chanting self meditation y yeah is it is chanting a form of meditation yes <laughs> yes yes i i mean okay yes but some uh, yes okay let me distinguish a little bit because sometimes people misunderstand about chanting so in the meditation practice, I told you before, there are two kinds in our tradition, concentration meditation and then inside meditation. Okay, in the concentration meditation, some of the ch chanting belong to in the concentration meditation. For example, thinking about the virtue or the Buddha, thinking about the virtue or the teaching, thinking about those things. So if you are thinking about those things, you can think about in your just in your mind, mentally, you can do it. Also, you can do it bodily too. So if you are doing the bodily, it's kind of chanting. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, I want to say something because sometimes I know something with with their mouth, but they don't understand the real meaning of that one. They don't they don't know what they are chanting, but even though maybe it's a good, but but I don't like those kinds of chanting. 
Yeah. You, you, there are two kinds of chanting, I mean. Some people chant it even though they don't know the meaning of it, the, me, the real meaning of it. I, I don't encourage those kinds of chanting. Yeah. Yeah. We, sometimes we call, if you know, like you are recording and just playing again, even though they don't know it. But what I mean is the real chanting is you will chant it with your mouth and also you are thinking about the real meaning of it. Okay, for example, okay, let me tell you one situation in Myanmar. There are many people who they chanted uh, impermanent, 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 something. But they are just, sometimes they are just all watching something here and there, and sometimes they are talking. So even though they can't say it's a chanting, but it's not real chanting. I mean, if, if, if it's not real chanting, it's not that good. Yeah. Maybe. What I mean is, if they chanted, yes, chanting is one kind of meditation practice, we can say it, but in those chanting, you must know the real meaning of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we've we've talked for a good a good time now, and uh, a lot of the major questions that Gleb yeah. has, and some of the ones that have come up through our conversation, we 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 have covered. So I think I would like to just close by saying uh, I really really do appreciate your time. It's um, I've, I've yeah, been yeah. A, few, a few books, uh, as has Gleb, a few online articles, but the the, uh, the personal connection, even over Zoom, it uh, it was very interesting to be able to ask those little nuanced questions, the follow up questions. It was very very helpful, and I'm very appreciative yeah. of of your time, yeah, yeah. as is Gleb and Ashima. So thank you very much, and I'll share your your uh, yeah. middle pathway advice to our year 12 and 13 students and hopefully we can come and visit uh, the monastery in person because uh, that's okay that's much okay. Better it's a little bit easier to say in person yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. great <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, all the best I, I, to, to, to be to be honest i'm even though i'm i with my answer maybe Maybe the the club and some people they will want to know more and more. I think I also want to explain if I have a chance. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. Yes, chatting with you actually. Thank you. We 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 are uh, breaking up for our summer holiday on Tuesday, uh, and uh, I I did actually ask uh, whether Gleb might be free on Monday, maybe maybe to come and see you. But he has uh, big exams, and so. Uh, um, C cannot this time but i i hope to stay in touch with eva lee and uh yeah. then it would be great to take some students in person and, and find out more uh you might be back in myanmar then but but hopefully we we have the chance to to stay in touch and uh we can speak to somebody in person that would be yeah 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 yes i'm 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 happy to share my knowledge yes as much i would try as much as i can yeah <laughs> okay have, have okay. a I'll... have a fantastic rest of uh I hope the the remaining time in Hong Kong is uh, really enjoyable and good luck with your masters as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, all thank the you. Okay. all the best then. Okay. I will send them. We will. Uh, we'll, okay, we'll see each other soon. Bye then. Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 <laughs>